And would you like to see? Uh, uh, Greg posts down below here and there. He replies with a few comments on my page. He's done a response. A little bit of banter. I don't. I've got no uh, no ill feelings or any hate towards Greg. Greg Duchet. Um I would love to. You know, if you want to learn about, oof, if you want to get more pussy in your life, I'm your man. Right? Weight loss, cycling tips, the whole works. Social media. That's where I'm at. Now, Greg, he is, I would put him as, you know, a forerunner, very experienced person, you know, one of the top people in the world, potentially, um, you know, in terms of anabolics, usages, you know, all the whole, the whole world. Now, he doesn't really talk too deep about that on his social media for various reasons. I wish he would, because you've got guys like Dan Bodybuilder in Thailand, you know, you got Derek Moore, Dates Moore Plates, um, who's talking about, you know, this stuff more in detail, especially uh, Dan Bodybuilder in Thailand. Check out his podcast, Sterile Podcast, fantastic podcast. Wealth of information for guys out there. Now, I'm not endorsing or recommending people use anything like that. I'm just saying, if you are, you want to be really, really educated on the topic versus just jumping in and, you know, just because, yeah, you want to educate yourself. Um, so I would put up Greg up there, right up there. I, I doubt there would be any endocrinologist in the world who would know as much as Greg does, or Dan, etc., or Derek even, you know what I mean? It, it, I've seen endocrinologists once before, a um, bit of shits and giggles, and the, the lack of knowledge they had, the arrogance they had, was just like, you know, I recorded it, but because where I live, um, actually, I can't get into that, can I? It was so embarrassing for that person, that the endocrinologist, I wouldn't put it up. Because I'm like, that just made him look so bad, you know? And what would be the, the legal ramifications of that? So, you know, I was just like, wow. Wow. And it cost like two or three hundred bucks some some joke. And I was just like, that is embarrassing. They even admitted, well, I don't really know too much, you know? And, and the embarrassment on their face. And we even got into the topic of diabetes. And I said, you know, what causes insulin resistance? She's like, oh, sugar. And I'm like, really? Sugar causes... The insulin receptor starts to, to get coated with the intracellular lipids, does it? And she's just like, it just glazed over, changed the subject, blah, 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 blah. Fat causes insulin resistance, not sugar. And sugar never can. That's why if you put someone on a, who's got type 2 diabetes, you put their fat intake under 20 grams a day, jack their sugar up as much as they want, get a protein, whatever. Insulin resistance psh, magically goes away. You know, magic goes away. That's why every single person does a keto, paleo, keto, Atkins, low carb diet, etc. Every single one, without question, will fail a glucose tolerance test. Their blood sugars might be like, oh look at that, my blood sugars, okay. But then you give them, get them to do a glucose, uh, an old glucose tolerance test, which is like a gold standard for insulin resistance testing. They always fail. They still have insulin resistance, even though their blood sugar might be like sort of low normal. You know, when you have funny, have some sugar, some carbohydrate, <laughs> insulin resistance kicks in because the insulin receptor site was so coated in fat, intracellular lipids, fat, oils, meats, just fat, avocado, butter, margarine, fats, coated insulin receptor site. So anyway, we're off tangent there. But um, it's just say all those people out there who go, oh, my doctor said, my necrologist said, it's like, that's, that's good you've got an opinion. That's really, really great you've got an opinion, but it's still just an opinion, right? What will, in, in the medical world, you have A, B, and C. When you go to university, you learn A, B, and C. Guys like Greg and Derek and Dan, they learn A, B, C, and then they go D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, M, and they got a whole alphabet. And all of a sudden, A, B, C goes, nah, A, B, C can go back down here. We're going to put K up the top. We're going to put Z there, and we're going to put E there. Now it's K, Z, E, not A, B, C. Does that make sense? You know, that's that whole lateral thinking of actually what's logical, what works versus what's just, you know, parroted out there by industry standard to create more sales, etc. Just like bikes, you've got disc brakes now. And all the, this is the SL7 tarmac. This is the most expensive specialized bike ever. And it's the worst they've ever made. And I can say that honestly, there's no sponsorship, no bias. You know, I love specialized product. This is the worst bike they've ever made in terms of road race bikes. It's not even race bikes, it's a cruiser bike now. 
it feels so sluggish. But all the noobs out there, but the wind tunnel tests, would you actually believe marketing hype from a bike manufacturer, any manufacturer for that matter, in 2021? If you do, you're probably a little bit, maybe you're 13, maybe you're 14, maybe you're still living at home on mum's Wi-Fi. That's okay. I was like that. I didn't have Wi-Fi in the 90s, but I was still living at home and I was pretty gullible. And that's fine. No dissing there, not trying to be condescending. But please don't, you know, try to debunk the experiences of people who actually are experienced in the field without a professional bias because they don't work for Specialized or Nike or Apple or whatever. You know, like real world people who actually got to put it out there. Guys like... Yeah, especially Dan, bodybuilder and Tyler, just putting it out there. Putting out their real life experiences uh, for you to, uh, to to learn from. It's pretty amazing. So it's it's incredible that you know someone could study hormones, etc., for years at university, become a, a qualified endocrinologist, charge people an exorbitant amount of money for a super vague consult, and just yeah, I'm just caught watching here, bushy bushy. Yeah, any questions? I don't really know the answers. Good. Anyway, nice seeing you. Thanks. Bye. Next. Come on. Let me give you some bad information as well. Uh, two, three hundred bucks. Thanks for coming. You know, it's just like, that's the reality. These people just live on this ABC paradigm. Now, some endocrinologists will go, you know, D, E, F, they go into the alphabet. And these people generally work with Olympic level athletes and, you know, system state ran doping protocols, etc. And they're the people like the Dr. Ferraris and stuff like that, you know, who really get into it and who create these you know, super champions like Lance Armstrong or... Michael Phelps or, you know, just you know, the, the greats of the greats in the sporting world who really understand that uh, whole pharma, co-kinetic, polymorphism, genetics, all those things, you know, <laughs> all those fancy words that get all the, the 14-year-old kids all, all, all hard. But I would love to have a debate with Greg Duche. Would you like to see that? Um, I think we both have a lot to offer, but I disagree with Greg on a lot of things, the whole calories in, calories out. For me, macros matters. Macros matters. Greg says, if you're in a calorie deficit, it doesn't matter. Put the fork down. Calories in, calories out. What do you need to get shredded? You eat less. That's just like, that might work for a little bit, but then eventually your thyroid, your TSH goes right up, your SHBG goes up, and now you've become like the, the you know, like a puffy, puff adder, puff daddy, and you're like, well, I'm eating like 2,000 calories a day, and I'm going to look like a chipmunk with glandular and wisdom teeth removal, you know what I mean? Because you're just thrashing metabolism. It ain't calories in, calories out. I mean, calories are important, but hormones determine everything. Hormones determine everything. You know, I could eat 3,000 calories a day, take two gram a week, and you know, probably go up to 90 to 100 kilos, maybe. Who knows? But I'm eating 3,000 calories a day, and I've gained 20, 30 kilos. So it's not calories in, calories out. It's hormones. Right? So you want to eat in a way that it benefits your hormonal goals. I work with a lot of ballerinas and cyclists and runners and models and just everyday people who want to be slim. And I'll always put them on super low fat, under 20 grams of fat a day, right? Now, if you're underweight, that's going to be too little, right? You need to, but that's a different story. Anyway, this is just a quick video here. I wanted to talk about um, some differences, me and Greg, on this page, a lot of similar things. Um, but yeah, it would be, I think it'd be great round table discussion. If you'd like to hear it, Give this video a thumbs up. If you don't want to hear it, give the video a thumbs down. And we'll see you later today. Thanks for watching. And Natasha's turned up. Natasha, would you like to see a Duran Rider versus Greg Duchesne debate, discussion, roundtable? Yes. I agree.